Hmm. I'll tell you my first memory. Even there was a painting which was done exactly at the time when I did fear upstairs with uh, the airplane. Uh, it was a really hot summer, that summer of 87, when, uh, when I was doing these big paintings in a very small studio. So one of the paintings, along with this fear, was called My First Memory. And it was exactly about my first memory. I guess I was three, four years old. We were with my parents on the Black Sea, but not at that time, which means it was somewhere like a 61 or 62. Maybe. And it was in a kind of a village. And I'm outside of the house, a village on the coast of Black Sea. I'm outside of the house in the garden. It's really hot, you know, when, when the, the sky is not really blue, it's white. It's really hot. And then there were these two or three girls apparently older than me, but again, children. And they found from somewhere a dead, dried up snake. And I just like a, throw it over my head. So this was my first memory. And I made a yeah, nice painting uh, out of this. <laughs> Very good question. Maybe it goes, uh, maybe it was inherited uh, also from my mother. Uh, when uh, she was young, she was a student, she was really collecting all of her friends to go and watch movies because at that time you need to have a number of at least a dozen people in this uh, small provincial town uh, in order to have a projection. Mostly Soviet films, of course. We are talking about the 50s. Not, not mostly, all of them, there were Soviet or Bulgarian films, and maybe the Deutsche Democratic Republic. And maybe I inherited this one from her. But uh, ever since my childhood, I really love going to, to films. Really love going to films. Now I carry with me uh, about 50 Blu-rays, and it depends on my mood, what I would like to watch. So you're listing it. Tak, tak, tak. Okay, now I want to do this. Hmm. It's a cliche. It's my way of expressing myself, in a way. It's my way of uh, dealing with the world around me. I am in the world. Uh, very often becomes extremely egocentric because it's me and the rest of the world. But it seems that uh, if I have the right angle and the right position of this me and the rest of the world, no matter how egocentric this may sound, uh, the people, they believe me, because in a way they kind of put themselves on my place which means that maybe it's not so egoistic after all. And uh, art? I didn't dream as a, as a young boy to become an artist. My father, rest in peace, uh, he was a pretty really good sculptor. And of course, uh, all the time I was making drawings and uh, when I was uh, ninth grade, uh, started like a drawing from how do you say, like a still lives uh, in order to apply for the academy, which was after three years. But I never really had uh, like the great passion from the very beginning, okay, I really would like to become an artist. Even the first uh, uh, one, two, third, three years in the academy, they were really hard for me because I came from mathematic gymnasium, uh, graduated with golden medal, full A of everything. And uh, the first one, two years, uh, all the other colleagues of Pioneer Academy in Sofia who graduated uh, these specialized uh, high schools uh, for art, they were really like, wow, it was shocking for me. And I was making such silly things, for example, mixing together uh, tempera, which is water-based paint, 
and uh, oil paint, which is completely out of thing. Mixing them together, it becomes like a real shit, which doesn't work. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but then on the third gate, you start like a feeling yourself that uh, whatever you have uh, like feelings about, uh, about the life you're living, you can, you can help that way of living by just putting it on canvas or on paper. Yeah, and I think I keep doing this. The ultimate for me masterpiece of all times is The Triumph of Death by Bruegel in Prado. It's amazing work. I mean, first I think that Bruegel is, is the best. Even the best sounds really silly. You know my adoration. I mean, we spent with you in Vienna and Kunstmuseum uh, some good one hour at least. And for me, it was complete blasphemy to talk with you about this show in front of Bruegel. They have one dozen Bruegels there, dozen Bruegels. But uh, when I saw this, The Triumph of Death, in original for the first time, I kind of forgot that this piece is in Prado. And I was absolutely eager to go in the room of Bosch and to see the how it's called in English, the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Delights. Yeah. And then I, huh, I appeared in front of the triumph of death. And I was so shocked that I lost my show, actually. Expensive Kashmir show, and I realized that three hours later when I was outside of Prague, which means that it was really amazing impact on me. <laughs> Yeah, I made a big work out of this part of it is show here. And as I'm saying in the text, which unfortunately is not here, but is in the catalog, I'm saying that actually I miss my youth. Yeah, it's not really the, the socialism times, but I miss my youth. And I guess if you live in a real tyranny, I mean, you won't miss it. But very frankly, it was not uh, such a totalitarian state and tyranny as... Uh, uh, as people in general in the West think it was. You know, now there is a, a great deal of nostalgia in, uh, in our countries. Most of the people, they still, they start slowly realizing that uh, for most of them will not become better. <laughs> and uh, the so-called very abstract justice that may appear out of democracy is not really working. And uh, for me now is much, much better, of course. I can do yeah, my things and, uh, but it was, also, it was also very hard. When the break was uh, in 89, I was relatively established young artist in Bulgaria and then you really start from scratch going to the West. And the big problem is that you really don't know where is this scratch exactly to start from. Because you know nothing. You do kind of ABC mistakes, uh, trying to approach this or that curator or to try to realize your projects. So it was very, very difficult at the beginning. But I would not say that I missed that uh, system. Yeah, of course, the, I mean, all the time, and I'm knocking on my head, knock on wood, uh, uh, I want everything to be okay with my family. That's it. So apparently, you understand my fear. Yeah. Good question. Never really thought in that way. I'm a strange person. Very rarely I can get a kind of satisfaction. For example, that big catalog of that show that we work so much on this. And when you get it, I say, <laughs> okay, so it's not really an accurate, and now what? But you just can't become happy. I don't know for whatever reason you can't become happy. And uh, yeah, my wife, she's really nice, and they say, yeah, you're just trying to figure out problems for yourself. I mean, it, just, just enjoy, in a way. And uh, there are several things which I really like. 
in the place when I go every, every summer is the studio near the, my home city, Gabrovo. And in that studio, there were painted uh, a number of works, actually, which are here in the show. For example, a very, self, a very sad self-portrait was painted there. Uh, also, I think, On the Way was painted there. And uh, also, the brook was painted there. So in that studio, every summer since many, many, many years, I go in the so-called, uh, the favorite places of Netco. So somewhere in the woods, this is really, it's really amazing. Even now, before this interview, I was kind of moving myself because I found some, every year they kind of expand the roots around the woods. And especially that year, I was really lucky. It was such a marvelous uh, parts of these woods I, I found. Fantastic. Yeah. So this is one of the things I like most. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay, middle age. Yeah, you realize that you're middle age and that, that uh, you realize that you, it's not becoming better. You look at your belly and your butt uh, like in nostalgia film and uh, subconsciously at the beginning you think, okay, no, no, maybe I'll return back to this uh, 80, 85 kilos I had uh, years ago and I kept in my mind that I'm 85 kilos for at least 10 years and there were already maybe 100. So now it's 110 and because they were really treating me well here, I think there may maybe 112. <laughs> And uh, no, it feels it feels okay. I, I don't think so. I have this uh, middle age crisis, but we should we should ask my wife. Yeah. Okay. I I, I didn't buy like a Porsche, uh, but uh, I'm driving uh, the latest model of Range Rover. So it's uh, maybe it's part of this middle age crisis also. 